Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a Django and React login slash authentication system. This is not the first video in this series, in fact we've already done eight before in which we've completed a setup and already focused a little bit on the sign up and the login of users. In this video we're going to continue and we're going to be focusing on protected routes and this is going to enable us to redirect users that don't have a token yet. If you want more information about the application we have created, uh, feel free to watch back my previous videos uh, because it explains everything we've done so far. Um, but you don't need that knowledge to follow along with this video for protected routes. In this video, we're going to address six main points. I'm going to start with an explanation on why we need protected routes in our application. Next, we're going to create a new file for our protected routes and we're going to do a check in there if the user has a token or not. Then once the logic for the protected routes is complete, we're going to add the protected routes to our app.js file. And we're going to then add it to the different routes in our app.js file that need this protection. And as a last step, we're going to test it out and see if it works the way that we expect. So why do we need these protected routes? Well, right now we are in the logging screen of our application and we have not logged in yet. And if I go to our local storage where we should be storing our tokens, you will see that we currently don't have a token for our website, which means that I should not have access to the pages uh, behind my login screen. But if I now go to a page that should be behind my login screen, such as slash home, you will now see that we have access right here uh, and we are fully able to do whatever we would like to do. And that is something that we want to avoid because people should never be able to reach this page unless they have a token from our backend. And that is what Protected Routes is going to do. It's going to make sure that it's going to look for the token inside of our local storage. If that token is there, then they can proceed to a different page. And if that is not the case, then they need to be redirected to our login page because they first need to log in before they go into our application. And we're going to write that particular logic inside of our components folder of our front end. So inside of components, I'm going to create a new file called protectedroutes.jsx. And we're going to start this file with a few imports. And the imports that we're going to do is outlet and also navigate. And both of those are from React Router DOM, like this. Next, we are going to define our constant. Uh, and we're going to do constant protected route. And after that, we are going to put an is sign, two round brackets, and then an arrow function, like this. And after that, we will do some squiggly brackets to make it all complete. Now, inside of this statement, we are going to uh, first look for our token. So we're going to define a constant called token and in here we want to have our token. Next we want to return something and what we are going to return is a statement that is going to evaluate if that token is there then feel free to continue and if the token is not there we're going to navigate the user to the login page. So in here we're going to do token and then a question mark to evaluate whether the token is there. And if the token is there, we're going to state that we want to do outlet, like this. And if it is not there, we're going to do something else. We're going to do navigate, like this, and then close it, like so. And we're going to define the to parameter equal to a slash, because the slash is where our login page is right now. But why do we use outlet right here? Well, this outlet is functioning as a parent. And if you specify this, it's going to allow the rendering of the child components. Um, and this will all make sense a little bit later on because we're going to pass this protected route to all of the routes underneath it. And by evaluating first whether a token is there, if that is the case, then we want to render all of the children below it. Otherwise, we want to re-navigate. Now there are two things that we need to change here. The first thing is that we want to get our actual token. Now in the previous video, you already saw how we can store an item inside of our local storage. And right now we're going to actually retrieve it. And it's quite similar. We again are going to do local storage. 
But then we're going to do get item, and we're going to be looking for the name of token. Uh, and the reason that I'm looking for token is that we've also stored it as token in our login page. Because you can see right here that we, when we set the local storage, we also set the name here to token. All right, so now we actually have a token right here. The second thing that we also need to do is we need to export this uh, protected route. So we need to do export default, and then we can do protected route like this. And that is actually all that we need to do right now. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go to our app.jsx and we now need to apply these protected routes to all of the URLs that actually need it. So we're gonna go over there and we're going to start on the top by importing the protected route from our protected routes file. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to define where we need to place it inside of our file. Now you can already see here on the top that we have several routes here for the login page and also for the register page. And we actually don't want to have a protected route right there because in our login page and our register page, you should always be able to access it. Now you don't need a token to get there and you don't need to be authenticated. However, for the rows here below, where we specify the path of the home and the about page, we do want to apply this protected routes. And the reason for that is that I only want people to continue to the home or the about page after our login uh, if they are actually authorized um, and have a token. So we can enforce that protection very easily by simply going into this routes component. And we're going to, again, state that we have a route like this. And then we're going to place our existing routes that need that extra security inside of this route right here. Like this, and let's just fix the indentation as well. And then we're going to add something inside of this route called element. And this element is going to be equal to the block of protected route, like this. And if we now save it, we should not be able to access the home or the about page unless we have a token inside of our local storage. Now, how does this full process work? Well, once we hit this page, the first thing that happens is this element right here gets evaluated. Now, inside of the protected routes, it's going to look for a local storage uh, item called token. And if that token is there, then outlet is going to allow all of the child routes to be available. Uh, and the child routes, in this case, if we go back to the app.jsx files, are going to be the routes right here. So by putting outlet right here, we are enabling everything below right here to work as it should. However, if the token is not there, we are going to immediately navigate to the login page because users cannot have access to it and they need to first log in. And that is how that full process works from start to end. So now let's take a look inside of our browser at what it actually looks like on our screens. So we are back in our logging screen right now. And if I click on inspect, we are going to quickly open our local storage. And we can find that under the arrows, then application. And in here you see the local storage. Now, currently we do not have a key called token in here because you can see we only have debug with some kind of value right here. So if I now do slash home right here and I click enter, it is going to redirect to my home page, but then immediately it goes back to our login page because it has recognized that we don't have a token. So that's very nice. Now, if we log in with email at email.com and we do testing 321, we can click on the login and we are going to get a token and navigate to the home page. And now you can see that we can stay here for a longer period of time. And also, when I go to inspect and I'm going to go to my local storage again, it should show us the token, and that should be the reason why we are here right now. Yeah, you can see that it's right here. Now, if I choose to delete this token right here, and I refresh my page, you will see that we are immediately being redirected uh, to our login page right here, um, because it does not work that way. We cannot have be there without a token. And that is how that actually works. Now, of course, we've only done this with one criteria. We only evaluated whether you, we have a token or whether we don't have a token but you can extend this code to your protected route with a lot of other things if you would like to.
So based on certain rules or based on certain uh, users, you would be able to navigate them to certain places. And that's very nice as an extra layer of security for your application. Now, one thing to notice here is that we're only checking whether a token exists inside of the local storage. We're not actually checking if that token is still valid. It could well be expired uh, at a stage. Uh, the reason that we are just doing the token right here uh, is that is, this is a very simple implementation and a very quick check for React. If you want to make this much more secure, ideally you would send back a response to our backend that checks the validity of this token, then comes back with a response and tells us whether the token is valid or not. However, that means that every time we go from page to page, it's gonna do a lot of checking before we actually get there. And that's something that we want to avoid. And you don't need to worry about that anyway, because in the next videos, we're going to be focusing on protecting our APIs so that no sensitive information can come from our backend to our frontend. And in there, we are going to evaluate whether a token is valid or not. And that is actually all that we're going to be doing for today. Uh, in this video, I've showed you how you can enable protected routes inside of your React.js application. Uh, in the next video, we're going to continue and we're going to add the token from our local storage to the requests that we make to our backend with Axios. And that is going to make sure that every time when we send a request, we can authorize and authenticate ourselves to the backend so that the backend knows that we can actually receive uh, information from the database. And in that video, we will also build some logic that if we don't have a valid token, that we will also be redirected to a different page. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.